Well, a real Christian is someone who loves and follows Jesus Christ. But the real Jesus, the one that we read about in the Bible, the one born of the Virgin Mary, who lived a sinless life, who died on the cross for our sins, who rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. That's the real Jesus. It's very different to the caricatures that are sadly so common today. The just the good man Jesus or the just the prophet Jesus. He was and is much, much more than that. So a real Christian knows and loves Jesus, the Son of God, and acknowledges him as Lord and Saviour, trusting in him and him alone for eternal life, for entry into heaven, what we call salvation. So he or she is saved from a real place called hell, which we all deserve, and given the gift of life in Christ. And that's not a gift that just comes to us after we die. When we become Christians, we get a foretaste of that here and now. Our lives are transformed by God and we experience something of the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the power, the purpose, the contentment that will be fully realized when we are finally and fully in the presence of Christ. And because we all sin, if we're being honest, we know, we all know that we've done things that are wrong, even when we've known they were wrong. And sin is when we do something that is wrong in God's sight, that goes against his law. And whilst God is loving and merciful, he's also holy and just. And so he must punish sin. He can't just pretend it never happened. That would be unjust, which would be against his character. And the Bible tells us that the punishment for sin is death, eternal death or separation from God forever in hell. Now, if we left it there, the outlook would be pretty grim because what that means is that every one of us, without exception, deserves hell because we've all sinned. But God is also love. And so he's provided a way out for us. One that means he can forgive us and accept us into his presence whilst at the same time still exercising justice. The only sacrifice for sin that could satisfy a perfect God and his justice is a perfect sacrifice. And since we don't qualify, because again we're all imperfect, Jesus, the perfect son of God, came into the world as a man. That's what we celebrate every Christmas. He lived a perfect, sinless life and then died on the cross in our place as a substitute for us to pay the price for our sins in full. So he accepted our debt and paid it in full for us. And that is the only sacrifice or payment for sin that is acceptable in God's eyes. So in other words, we don't try to earn heaven by being good. That's just impossible. We're accepted by God when we accept his gift of forgiveness by faith in Jesus Christ, who he is and what he's done for us, and then accept him as our Lord and Saviour. So forgiveness is a gift from God that is accepted by faith. We can't add anything to it. In fact, to try and do that, to add anything to it, is, is really to insult him. It's like saying, thank you for dying for me, but you know that's not enough. I have to do something else as well. And we can't. And Jesus rose from the dead after three days. He was seen by lots of people before he went up into heaven. And the resurrection shows us that his sacrifice has been accepted by God the Father, so that we who belong to him will also rise from the dead. Well, because when we accept Jesus for who he really is and ask him to become our Lord and Saviour, then God the Holy Spirit comes and indwells us. He lives in us. And that always brings tremendous change. Our motivations are changed, our hearts and attitudes are changed, and our very lives are changed as well. And we have a new, a heartfelt desire to live, not for ourselves, but for him, for the one who has done so much for us, who has given so much for us. And so we become a new person in a very real sense. We're radically transformed when we become members of his family, hence the term born again. And every real Christian is born again. Jesus makes that very clear in the Bible, in John's Gospel in chapter 3. And this makes us want to do things that are pleasing to God and not to do things that are displeasing to him. Not to try to earn salvation or heaven. We can't do that as we've already said. But out of gratitude for what he's done for us, an appreciation of who he really is and a love for him. Well, firstly, by understanding that like all of us, you have sinned. You have broken God's law as revealed to us in the Bible. And again, we all deserve his judgment and punishment. We've all done that. But you mustn't stop there. Next, you must believe in your heart that Jesus, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, again as we celebrate every Christmas, that he lived a perfect, sinless life and died on the cross in your place in order to pay in full, once and for all, the complete, total price for every one of your sins, past, present and future. 
and that he rose again and ascended into heaven, showing that his sacrifice has been accepted. So confess your sins to him. Don't try to hide them or minimize them. Just be open and honest. He knows them anyway. You confess them and then you ask him to forgive you and ask for his help to repent from them. Now, repent is an old term, and it really means to change your mind and your way. So, for example, if you've been sexually promiscuous, which the Bible says is wrong, then admit that to God. Ask him to forgive you because of Jesus, and then determine not to do that again with his help, with his grace. So you commit to him, but not just as the one who saves you by dying for you, but also as Lord, the ruler of your life. And that means living a life that is pleasing in his sight. And we find out what that looks like in the Bible. So start reading the Bible. And it also helps to tell somebody, to, to make this public, let it be known that you now belong to Jesus and find a good local church where you can learn more. Now, of course, if you're in the Lincoln area, we'd love to welcome you here to TCM. If you're further afield, then you might want to check out the FIEC's directory of Bible-believing churches. Well, firstly, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy that you've passed from death to life and not just eternal life beyond the grave, but a richness and fullness of life here and now, this side of death. Your life now has real meaning and purpose and power, and this actually is the birthright of every true Christian. We grow into these things. And the ways we do that are by prayer, by talking to God, by worshipping him, asking his forgiveness, bringing our request to him and thanking him for all his blessings. And this deepens and enriches that personal relationship with God, which is so vital. And we pray for others as well. It's also important to read your Bible. And we call the Bible the Word of God because that's what it is. This is a manual for life and much, much more as well. It's full of promises, guidance, encouragements, warnings, wisdom, and more besides as well. So get into the habit of reading and studying the Bible regularly. And the Bible tells us that we should meet together frequently as well. So find a good local church. Again, if you're in Lincoln, come and join us at TCM on the high street. If you're further afield, then check out the FIEC's list of Bible-believing churches. You're beginning the most exciting journey in your life. And you are going to have questions, and there are going to be things that you want to share. And a good local church provides an ideal place for doing that and for really growing in your faith and being an encouragement to others. Well, the sad truth is that we all do still sin, even as Christians. But what we should see as we go along in our Christian walk is that we take sin very seriously indeed, and we get stronger and stronger at resisting the temptations to sin. Now, in the Bible, there's a letter written by the Apostle John. After his gospel, he writes three further letters that have his name in them. And the first of those, or one John as we call it, addresses this precise issue. I love the way the Bible is so relevant, how it speaks into all of our situations. And here's what John says we should do. We confess and repent again in the name of Jesus. And we ask for his forgiveness and his grace, his anointing power, to have the heart and the strength to really change. And sometimes we're set free very quickly from the power of a particular temptation, a sin that had gripped us previously very strongly. But sometimes it's a longer process, it's a battle. And if that's the case, then keep going, keep the faith, keep asking God for help to overcome it. He will honor such prayers if they're from the heart.